Yeah, so resolve. I have a question for you. When I say the word resolve, is there a feeling or other word that gets evoked when you hear the word resolve? If one comes to mind and you're willing to drop it in the chat, would you do so just to hear a few of them, just to kind of bring in the experiences of, of determination? Yeah, absolutely. Commitment, solidifying, commit, firm, steady, strong, vow, beautiful, intention, absolutely. Forge ahead, yes, forge ahead. Right. I, you know, I don't know. One of one of the words that comes up for me around resolve is steadfast, beautiful. Is um, abs, abdominals, <laughs> like, yeah, resolve, abs. Work on your abs. I don't know why that is, but it just kind of comes up right, right, right around the word resolve. Steadfast, beautiful, again and again, beautiful, beautiful. One more question, then. just one more. When I say absence of resolve, absence of resolve, is there a feeling that gets evoked? Or another word? Absence of resolve, beautiful, fear, disappointment, unhinged, empty. Wobbly, unmoored, weakness, weakness, apathy, neglect, yeah, sad. I think we have a pretty good idea of why resolve is one of these paramis. Let me just bring this up for a moment. Right, without resolve, as Lee was talking about yesterday, we might not be here today. Eh, I don't feel like it. Right, I've got something better to do. So reflect, reflect on what went into your choice to come here today. We grow our willingness to practice because we begin to trust and experience that there's something really important for us in practice. But we forget. We practice to remember what's important. And I love how Susan referred to um, Resolve as a, as a post-it note, a gentle reminder of what is important moment to moment to moment. It is not a club we beat ourselves with. It reminds us of what we actively want to bring forward into our lives and into our practices. And as Lee talked about, on Monday, resolve underlines and it strengthens all the paramis. We need to be resolute because, because we get distracted. We have conflicts and instead of being generous, perhaps we would rather withhold or maybe we would rather get upset than to bear our distress with patience. Ajahn Suchito writes, a way of talking about transcendence or liberation or however you conceive of a path, a spiritual path, is to use the metaphor of crossing the floods. And you've heard us talk about crossing the floods. 
He goes on to write, interest in deep change gets triggered by the feeling of being swept away being swept away along by events or, or being overwhelmed or maybe going under the tide of, of worries or duties, pressures. And this is this is dukkha, right? This is samsara. These, these are the floods. We get hurt or maybe we get insulted or inconvenienced. And we lose our resolve to keep composure. So crossing the floods is about coming through all that and finding some, some firm ground. And that takes work. It takes skill. It takes resolve. It takes resolve. But we can do it. We determine to be generous, or we resolve to refrain from doing harm. We deliberately <clears throat> set the intention to let go of what needs to be relinquished, or we grow in our commitment to be discerning, and to investigate. We persevere and begin again, we begin again, and again, someone wrote that again and again to deliberately cultivate the intention to bring energy, patience, truthfulness to one's practice and to our lives. I have a, a, a better understanding of of resolve today than I did on one particular day in September. And I feel a little silly actually telling this story because all of what is going on in the world today. It's a story about shaky resolve where I really did forget what was important. And I, I told my husband, John, I, I was going to tell this travel story and some of the lessons I had learned when we were reviewing equanimity. And my husband goes, you mean you're going to tell them that you learned that you needed some equanimity? <laughs> like, yes, yes. A little bit would have gone a long way. And we can, we can view, we can look at any of our experiences through any of the lenses of the paramis. So today I'm, I'm gonna share this, this experience through the lens of resolve. John and I were flying back from Colorado Springs. We had just attended a really lovely wedding and, and our plane took off. It was a beautiful day and we were up in the air and the pilot said to us, uh, she said, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I need to let you know that the plane isn't playing nice with me this morning. I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> well, what that meant was that the cooling system wasn't working. And so the, the wings of the plane would not be able to de-ice if we went up to a higher elevation and that would be dangerous. And so we're going to turn back. And that's exactly what we did. We landed back in Colorado Springs. Well, that's where it just got worse. Of course, you know, we missed the connections. We had two canceled flights. Our luggage went to one airport and we went to a different airport and we couldn't drive home because our luggage, the keys to our cars was in the luggage on the airport, on the airplane and we couldn't drive. It, it just, it was like that. It was a, a long day and a long night. And compared to, to, to what is happening in the world, oh my goodness. This, this wasn't a crisis. It was pretty insignificant and small, but at the time, at 
the time, it felt like a nightmare, right? You know those those nightmares. Do you ever have those where you just you're trying to get somewhere and you just you just can't. Every gateway, there's this there's something coming up and it stops you from getting where you want to go. Can't get home. And hours and hours and hours of waiting. Now, wouldn't this have been a good time to practice? But I didn't want to. Maybe some of you can relate to this. I, I didn't want to follow my breath. I, I, my righteous indignation about the airlines, the incompetency of the airlines and the poor communication, the seemingly indifferent communication seemed far more dramatic and interesting than following this breath. Swept away by the floods of inconvenience. And, I, and, if I, and I'm really honest about this. I wanted my husband to join me, to get angry with me, to be, you know, puffed up like, you know, like with me, along with me. But what was he doing, my non-meditating husband? He was sitting quietly, eyes closed, resting in the midst of all this. <laughs> I'm sort of walking around the baggage, you know, <laughs> just walking around the baggage. I wanted my baggage. I wanted to get home. And the truth is, from distance and perspective, wider view, I've been carrying my baggage all along. I don't want to can be a really fierce energy. I don't want it. And as I reflect back on it, I, I know I was afraid of, I had a lot of um, things to do the following day. I didn't have my computer. I didn't have my charger. That was all packed too. And I, I you know, a lot of important work that needed to be done and this fear that I wouldn't be able to meet it adequately was for sure very present. So resolve is a post-it note the post-it note to help us remember what is important moment to moment. Ajahn Suchuto um, writes this, and I think this is one of the yellow markers for me. Meeting one personal dreary muttering mind with an unflinching heart can be even more demanding than experiencing compassion for the starving people of the world. We take away the worthy cause and we begin to feel like maybe this isn't so important, so worthwhile. So the next time you feel, I don't want to, just a kind, friendly post-it note. What's important? As if turning toward this breath and settling this heart mind is something quite worthy to do. So I think this is a good time to practice. Let's practice. And you know what to do. Let's resolve to turn our attention toward opening the bodies. Seeing what they need. Where you might need to open. where you might need a little cushion, a little more support. Mm. A little sway.
when you're ready in your time coming into a posture that is comfortable you want to orient toward a comfortable posture allowing the body to be as as supported and comfortable as it can so that it doesn't have to work so hard We're closing the eyes, if that is helpful to you. Maybe taking some deliberately longer breaths. And each exhale could be a letting go of some baggage, some stress. And orienting toward a comfortable breath. Inviting the eyes to soften. Perhaps the mouth, jaw can drop open a little. And maybe there are little grippings and graspings in the body that might unwind, unknot. For this little while, orienting toward well-being and ease. Reminding the mind that it too can Relax and drop open and down into the stream of body and breath. Friendly post-its, friendly reminders that support us.
And if the mind is distracted or drifting, allowing the physical breath in the body to invite you back to presence. As if this breath is precious as if this moment is worthy of noticing. Mm -hmm. Kindly returning.
what might soften even a little more. Softening and allowing, however it is, with kindness. <laughs> 